Hello everyone, it's so good to be here again. Today I want to talk about Priscilla, a film that just came out this week in theaters. It is written and directed by none other than Sofia Coppola, who's done a number of interesting films. I haven't seen all of them, but my favorite from her has to be, even to this day, Lost in Translation. That film just captures something magical, melancholic, and really complex and intimate in a way that few films ever have done in my life. And with that being said, I do think that Priscilla is probably one of her most interesting films in a while. This is, of course, a story of the relationship between Priscilla and Elvis Presley himself, the man, the king. And yeah, I can't blame any young girl falling in love with him, especially when she was at the age of 14 when they first met. A little bit young, a little bit of a red flag, but uh, at, at least I was handled with as much of a gentleman's point of view as it could have been at those times. Anyways, as I was saying a moment ago, I can't blame a young girl falling in love with Elvis Presley. I mean, that moment early in the film when someone asked like, hey, would you like to meet Elvis Presley? Like, yeah, sure, I would love to meet Elvis Presley. Who wouldn't? You like Elvis Presley? Of course. And my god, the man at that time just had lightning bolts coming out of his fingertips. I mean, who could not fall for him at that time? But indeed, we transition from this very uh, young, fresh, and explosive romance and transition to something a lot more complicated and fr frankly frustrating. Elvis is always on tour, doing his shows, his films, and he's rarely at home, and Priscilla's kind of left to be this princess stuck in a castle. And I can't believe I never thought of this parallel before, but most of her films, if not all her films actually, Sofia Coppola seems to have this kind of princess stuck in a ivory tower archetype that seems to mirror her own life. I imagine that's what it must have been like to be Francis Ford Coppola's daughter and be stuck in these luxury hotels for most of her childhood life. Anyways, I digress. This is a very alluring film to watch, mostly because of the magnanimous performances from both leads. Kaylee Spini as Priscilla navigates that performance with incredible intimacy and nuance. A lot of her role is actually spent in silence, but that silence is engulfing and she does quite a lot with it. It is a very interesting performance that will likely garner a lot of attention when it comes to award season. But I do think personally, at least as far as I'm concerned, the highlight of the show would have to be Jacob Elordi, who is the one playing Elvis in this iteration. And especially being hot off the heels of last year's Baz Luhrmann's epic, Elvis... Man, there were some pretty big shoes to fill. Austin Butler's performance was grandiose. And admittedly, the tone of this one is much more subdued, more in the shadows, more in the background almost. But he gives a wonderfully magnetic performance nonetheless. What a fascinating character to capture on film, eh? But indeed, I find that one of my favorite qualities of this film is the whole aesthetic quality of it. Once again, in contrast to Baz Luhrmann's very explosive, vibrant, kaleidoscopic Elvis biopic, this is much more subdued, submerged, uh, almost in shadow, almost as if it has this like perpetual cloudy day quality to it. And I do think that's a very smart aesthetic choice to properly mirror Priscilla's feelings of being, once again, trapped in this ivory tower. It's this very dreamy and hazy feel of the film. And also, a shout out must be given to all the costume design, the set decoration, and every little detail that goes into making this a period piece, chef's kiss on that. It really is a lovely artistic achievement here. And before I forget, the soundtrack is an absolute banger in this film. And you would think that you'd have Elvis bangers one after another in this film. Actually, as far as I can remember, I don't think we ever heard a single Elvis song. Instead, we delivered a bunch of period appropriate hits from that time era, and also more modern, lo-fi, melancholic, almost shoegazy elements that definitely make me feel like I'm kind of drifting back into Lost in Translation territory here. And I do think it works to great effect. This is actually surprising surprisingly one of the better soundtracks I've heard this year. So yeah, overall, I do love this film. Perhaps the biggest quip you could have with it is some of the historical inaccuracies. Not that I'm well-versed enough in Elvis lore to know what those are. But regardless, this is a very well-told story by a singularly gifted filmmaker. I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. 2023 is just putting out more and more great films. And Priscilla is definitely yet another example of that. And I gotta say... Elvis is truly a fascinating figure to capture on film. And it is refreshing to get a different perspective on him. Is it a bit more unflattering? Definitely. Uh, the guy had his problems. There's no doubt about it. And I can only imagine that what Priscilla went through must have been grueling to say the least. So yeah, I do highly recommend it. This is a fascinating take on one of the uh, most grandiose characters in recent history. With all that being said, wishing you and your loved ones nothing but the best. Take care and talk to you all very soon.